Welcome everybody, I'm Trenuxus and this will be a tutorial about taking out churchyards. Churchyard is a new bank which comes with Hornia Base expansion and it gives a lot of experience, money and artifact. So I think it's really worth um, to learn how to clear churchyards early on with every faction. So let's go and see what churchyards are. Alright, so churchyards are a bank where you have to fight walking deaths. They are on always 120 walking deaths, 6 stacks per 20 each. So, walking deaths, they are undead. That means they will never get morale. So that means we can learn one good strategy and we can clear them clear them every time. Okay. But why, why am I making this tutorial? There are some reasons. First of all, I want to learn myself how to clear search cards early on because it's really important as you can get a lot of experience, extra gold and artifact. Also, uh, this kind of tutorials are made for crypts, for Shadow of Death, and I didn't find uh, tutorials for churchyards for Hota, and because Hota is awesome, and because everyone loves Hota, and because Hota is probably now the expansion which will be used for many players, as we have now online chat, and we can create games with that, and we can just don't use Hamachi or Game Ranger or anything like that and just play the game. It's a lot simpler and it's a lot of, lots of fun. So I think many people will play Hota. So it's a very good time for me to make this tutorial, yes? So let's go. My strategy is based on the amount of army you will start with your heroes and you will get from your uh, starting town. So for example with Castle, I guess we start with Baleska. For Dungeon with Shakti, for Necro any hero, for Tower any hero, you will see later. Um, I want to clear Churchyards in the first, second day, but some towns are not able to and they have to wait till third or fourth day. In almost every fight I won't be using any kind of magic any kind of mana spells, but some factions really need to cast some spells to make fights easier. Okay, so first town will be castle, and before every fight I will show you this picture where you can easily check if you have enough and what you have to have to fight churchyards. So, you have to do 75 or more damage with maximum per shoot, and you will see later why this is necessary. Uh, we have always there two examples: what kind of army, how much army we have to do when we have like no attack skill, or when we have like some attack skill and some kind of secondary skills. And three attack skill advanced archery might be the Valeska, the second level. So. It's really possible to have that one with Castle, and it will be always the case. There will be no never situation like, let's assume we have expert offense, uh, expert tactics and no armor. No, it's always something what you can rely on in games um, and what you can have early on in game. So there's not really hard to get advanced archery and some attack skill with your heroes. and. Um, I will show you the situation when you have no attack skill and 28 marksmen. Um, Loses are also showed here. Sometimes it depends how much, how many units you will lose on how lucky you was. And it's always the minimum amount of army you should have. And if you have more, that's only making fight easier because there will be never uh, like remaining one walking dead who survived the attack just because he was less lucky when he was fighting him, shooting at him. Okay, here we are. So, 
You can check, I have hero without attack skill, without defense even, without any kind of archery offense armor. I have spells, uh, they will be used later for other towns. Castle don't need any kind of magic, we can just kill walking deaths without problems. And one more thing I wanted to mention, I have spirit of oppression, so I don't rely on morale because you can just say, oh, you won, because you got lucky morale, and you're right. So there are no morale in every fight. Of course, it doesn't help us, as Walking Dead will never get morale anyway. One more thing before fighting, I won't do commentary while fighting Walking Dead, because uh, simply I need to fit in one hour long video, and... When making commentary and explaining why Walking Dead moved there, why not there, why that even works, it will be too long. So, to explain things, I think I will make secondary, second video, and there we could talk about uh, fightings. And now let's just focus on solid, fast, or just short tutorial, where you can just quickly go and check what was the strategy. Also, I think that I can I can link um, this map for you uh, with saves. So I have saves for uh, I have saves for every town. So you can just go here and practice. I think it's fair. So probably in the description there will be a link where you can download a map and saves. Okay. And of course, there are multiple churchyards, as you may think that, okay, this time walking that moved that way, because you were lucky, the next churchyard, they will do something else. So, there are multiple churchyards, if you want to just clarify that. And army, and all of that, you can get here, from the starting point, and of course, it's... There, no, there shouldn't be any explanations, because it's just so easy. If you look step here, you will get expert archery. There you will get expert uh, offense. And moving here on the road, you will get plus one attack skill every time you move here. And in every step here, like there was pikemen, so this is army from a castle. Here is army from rampart, tower, inferno, in this hex. Or just square. So go ahead, try your best, and maybe later watch video, or just watch the video and then check if you um, if you know how to deal with church shots. Okay, so let's go to the fight. Okay, so now time for Rampart. Uh, again, it will be the same strategy. Kill the first stack of Walking Dead, lure uh, some of them back, and then just run away with Archer. Uh, and because you are a lot faster than Walking Dead, um, speed 7 with Marksman, speed 8 with Grand Helps, 
They will never catch you unless you want them to catch you and you have always enough shots because, because you have 24 and there are 6 stacks and you need 4 arrows to kill every stack. So, it's simple. Um, in this situation I am using dwarves because I find that, I think that they are less important than centaurs so it's better to lose dwarves and save your centaur power stack. For that fight uh, we have to have 15 grand elves, 1 centaur and 5 dwarves. 1 centaur is only because it kinda speeds up fight and make you feel more comfortable but of course one more dwarf will also work here. Okay, so let's go to the height. Okay, so we are after two cities, fights were two cities, um, and they were very similar, just have the upgraded shooters and kill walking deaths uh, while just running away. With tower it's not so easy, we have also shooters, but they have not enough amount of shots, so we need to wait until day 4 when we can have our Nagas. And when we have two additional Nagas, it's a lot, a, lot of, a lot easier to kill them because Nagas are tanky and they have no enemy retaliation. So that way we are able to kill um, church shards with really minimum losses as, lo as losing some um, golems are and stone gurgoli just because one more time it's more comfortable and easier and one of them it's fine to lose him.
Next is Inferno. And for Inferno there are two strategies. First, when you have upgraded Cogs, so you have Magogs, um, that means you can clear churchyards in first day after making upgrade with every hero without mana and without attack skill. So that's as strong as with Castle. Um, but of course, if you have some more attacks, you will need uh, less Magox and you are losing 6 Imps. So it's pretty freaking awesome because Imps doesn't matter. And Inferno has a really bad early game, so that helps a lot that you can clear church shots. Let's go to the game and see the battle. Next one for Inferno is when you don't go for upgraded Gox, which many times you don't want to go for, so you just have many Gox from Cap, but not upgraded. Then you have to wait until you have Ifrit, so it's day uh, 1, 2, and 3 day. It's day number 3, when you have Demons and Ifrit, and depends uh, how much attack skill and defense you have, you will lose only imps, but it might happen that you will lose like one demon, sometimes one gog, but nothing crazy. And third chart will be done.
Next is Necropolis. And with Necro, you have to have enough damage to one shot the um, 20 walking deaths. So you have, if you have no attack skill, it will be 156 skeletons required because 6 at 1 stacks, so 150 as main stack. If you have some attack skill like 5 and advanced offense, maybe in Amica, Clavius, many heroes from Necro heads are offense. And then you have a lot easier time and you can do it with 110 skeletons only. But of course, for this town, really important is to have a lot more than just this minimum because you can't bless skeletons, you, you can just help you yourself with magic arrows or something, um, but you will always lose more than only the six one stacks if you go for this badly minimum. So it's a very good time for you if you have a lot more skeletons or attack skill or something and you can easier and with uh, you can be just uh, sure that like you, you can one shot this 20 walking this every time then you have then you will have less losses so this is just very minimum i will do this situation when i have no attack skill and of course i will lose uh, some more army as you can see here sometimes it's you're lucky and you'll lose only six uh, but sometimes you'll lose more because after your attack some walking deaths will survive so let's go and see As this situation here. And this situation here. Your average damage, you have enough if you will be just medium lucky, but sometimes you are not and they survive. So it's important to have like. 10% more than the minimum. That was really unlucky that 7 survived. It was like maybe 1, 1 1.5 damage for skeletons and they can do from 1 to 3. So we lost 17, that's because we were not lucky. Sometimes we can do with 6 skeletons as loose only. For Necropolis, there is also one more situation when you have your Liches builded. I think to have Liches you have to do Mage Guild and then you can do the building for Liches. So it will be in second day. And this time you don't need that many skeletons. You can do the church shards with a bit less of them. And one more time, it's really useful now to not like use magic arrows every time but just have this magic arrow, so if something survives, you can just kill him immediately and you'll be able to shoot with liches again. Um, so you'll see uh, more in the battle itself in a second, but if you have uh, like 10% more, like 140, 150 skeletons, you're almost fine in every situation and this is just the badly minimum, what I am saying over and over again. So let's go and see the fight. Now it's the scariest moment when you have to kill 20 walking deaths which are not hitted before with liches. So now you could support yourself with magic arrow or maybe bloodlust because blood doesn't work. Just you can help yourself with something. You don't have to, but it's nice to have something. 
And this is a good uh, situation. This one walking that is blocking lift, so he can't shoot before our skeleton go. So it's a perfect use of magic arrow now. And all the necro hero starts with spellbook, and you do mage guild in first turn, in first day. So it's almost sure you have a magic arrow. So we can rely on this information. And skeletons this time are some walking that survived our attack, but once again it's just minimum army we had. Alright, now time for dungeon. Uh, with dungeon we really like having bless just because of the uh, damage variation for troglodytes from 1 to 3. So you have two situations in this town when you have bless and when you don't. So when you have bless and we don't have bless, the amount of uh, troglodytes is similar and it's the amount of troglodytes you have only when you will start with Shakti and uh, nothing else you have to rely on. You don't have to get two dungeon heroes from tavern with full army, no, don't have to. Uh, all you have to have is just the average army. So you can have bless and no attack skill, only you can have Five attack skill and advanced offense, for example, which for Shakti, of course, is easy to get. And with dungeon, you can clear this in first day. When, of course, upgrading to Infernal Trogodites, and we will, I will be fighting on the harder terrain, which is Divit, and not on the subterrain. So, first of all, we don't have bonuses for our army, and the Walking Deaths, they have bonuses for themselves. The fight itself will be the same as for Necro, where we had to also one-shot uh, Walking Deaths with Skeleton. Easy. <laughs> Second possible situation for Dungeon. Of course, you don't always have that many uh, troglodytes or you don't have blasts or anything. Uh, you can support you with the Beholders, of course. It's the structure you will do in town early on anyway, so it's not like out of path. And 10 is average army if, uh, yeah, for Shakti and so on from Tavern Plus. Uh, building from town, it's 10. Um, so once again, uh, our losses are based on how much we have. It's a steady minimum we have here, so we can lose even 15. Uh, but normally if you have a bit more, you will lose 5 because these are 1 stacks which are going to be sacrificed. And the fight is the same as with Necro and Felicis. And now it's the most dangerous moment, and it's really nice to bless or magic arrow now. As six of them survived, so it was really unlucky. Of course, we didn't shoot with Beholder at this stack before attacking, but anyway, it was sort of unlucky. So, what you should have now. Uh, is the magic arrow, of course this one is doing a lot of damage, but uh, you can survive also this fight without um, doing any kind of magic, but your losses will be harder. So let's have a look 
what it will be. So once again, I won't be able to shoot them because this stack is blocking me. Um, so I will attack 20 Walking Dead with this Infernal Dead without shooting with the Holder first. So it's really nice to have Bless, Magic Arrow or anything like that. And now I can shoot and attack. So loses our 15 as I showed in picture, but sometimes you will lose more. Depends if you're lucky or not uh, when you're attacking. So now time for Stronghold. I have to say that I doubt about Stronghold because you don't have any kind of shooters, you don't have a strong power stack, uh, Ilion like Trogodite, Skeletons, and I just even wanted to skip Stronghold and say that it's impossible. It's actually not true because many times, I mean, always you, uh, when you can, you will start with Tyraxor, so you'll have your Wolf Riders, and then they, when upgraded, they are really strong, so we need 37 with no attack skill, which is kind of many. Uh, but once we have six attack skill and advanced offense, which is for Tyraxor or any barbarian, not a problem. We can win without uh, having that many wolves, and only 27 is enough. Here, it's really something that you can rely on because Wolf Riders damage is from three to four, so it's not that hard. But to just be sure that you will do uh, the required amount of damage. So it's also a new tactic here, and let's go and enjoy. Did you enjoy that one? That was so many... Yeah, that was some time to figure out how to win this one. And I'm really <laughs> happy I managed to do this tactic. Boom. Yeah. Easy. Alright. So now time for Fortress. Uh, with Fortress, um, as a starting hero this time, uh, we're we have wisdom, so we have many shooting units, many lizard men. And of course, two situations once again. We can have no attack skill but bless, and it's only bless for two rounds, it's enough. Or we can have two attack skill and advanced archery, which for Vestan is possible to get, uh, because he starts with uh, basic archery, so two, three levels, and you'll have this setting. So let's go and see.
And of course at this point uh, we don't have to have blades uh, for 10 rounds. We have 24 shots so we can even afford to shoot with penalty or just without blades. It's just gonna be longer but the outcome will be the same as they will always want to try catch the seven fly. And if not, we are still speed 6, so nothing can happen, don't worry. You can shoot twice him, and he'll be dead then. Next situation is when you have a starting hero dragon, so you start with many nulls, and of course I don't see the upgrade uh, because units cost a lot uh, to upgrade them to Nulls Marauders and it doesn't give much, it's only one more speed. So even though you start with additional Nulls, I will go and upgrade my Lizards. So that's why I have 15 upgraded Lizards and not upgraded Nulls, even though Nulls are the power stack. So again, two possible formations or just situations. Um, first of all, we have uh, 95 nulls and two attack skill, or we have only 80 nulls and four attack skill with basic offense, which is of course possible to get. So uh, let's now go and see the battle. Um, he survived just because we have, uh, I mean, fast enough. Of course, if you have more, fight will be easier and faster. So, so. From now on it's only about shooting them and uh, trying to run with Serpent Flag. Uh, if we will shoot once, the Nulls should have enough to finish. Of course, now we can just hide them for longer and make this fight I mean, easier, but longer. Nothing big here. Next one is conflicts. Uh, with conflicts, it's really tricky. It's really nice if you have blasts uh, because uh, the star elementals then can do a lot of damage. But it is also enough if you have just a magic arrow with free spell power which is really the case for all the heroes from Conflux, so for example even Grindan, and you have to cast Magic Arrow twice to get rid of the first stack, and later it's all about running and shooting. Same with Maxman's Grand Elves. You'll see in a moment. So this time I go for this... Oh, I don't go for this Magic Arrow tactic. I have a uh, tensile power. Uh, oops. I think I can just um, pretend I, as I have free spell power. So, of course, I will now magic arrow him. I will do 40 damage. I will then shoot. Now, 
I will magic arrow him again, doing 40 damage, and I will shoot him. And then this duck should die. Of course, I have my magic arrow, which does even more than 80, which I will do with two magic arrows. But let's just pretend as I have these two magic arrows and shoot it now. Of course, some of them might survive, but it's not gonna matter anyway. It's even easier with Storm Elementals as they are speed 9, it's the quickest uh, shooting unit which you can use for the Walking Dead fight. And uh, here we have 22 shoots remaining, so once we have some free time left like now, I can either wait or just shoot. If I wait, I'll be more sure that they will not catch me, and this fight will be one of the most the, the longest one, uh, because I have just minimum amount of them, I don't use bless, I don't use anything else. And the magic arrow was just because I didn't want to lose any of store elementals, because if there will be like 8 walking dead um, still alive, then they might kill one of my walking dead. They won't be able to um, block me completely anyway, but I don't want to lose any of my power stacks so that's why the magic arrow, same as for skeletons through that fight, just to be sure nothing important will die. I'm able to shoot every unit four times, and then I will have two more shots for something what survives. So it's not really difficult, it's just about some time and they will be dead. I find out that the best is... Um, uh, the best is killing them one by one, like focusing always the same stack, because if there will be less, less of them, just less of them, it's an easiest, uh, easier to hide them, because you don't need to be afraid of so many stacks reaching you. So how many? Seven shots. So I can even kill that one. And it was the minimum amount of tournaments. I think you can do it even with a bit less of them. I have how many? Two more shots. And of course, when like this one survives, I can always use my melee attacks to finish like this one, two walking deaths. And finally, time for Cove. Cove is definitely the hardest one. It's so difficult, and I will tell you why. Many people think that Cove is over overpowered and it's super strong, and indeed it is. It's really... Okay, it's not uh, the point of video, but... It's hard to create churchyards uh, simply because many times you will just start with Remy and his cannon won't be in uh, this fight. Uh, even if you will start like with Elvacius, you don't want to waste your mana on clone on the churchyard, so you don't have really a, rare, a stack with, on which you can rely on. Um, there is one thing, if you will start with Cassiopeia and you will get blessed, then the fight is the same as with troglodytes uh, one-shotting or skeletons one-shotting everything. So it can happen also with Oceanid if you have Cassiopeia because you need many Oceanids and you need Bless. But it's not really that many times when you have that. So this strategy is based on um, the units you will probably have. So, it's like starting with Grammy or anyone else and having this army. So, um, for Cove, it's really nice if your hero will have some kind of magic, like shield, stone skin, um, cure, cure is really great, or anything what will just help you do damage or just help you surviving. 
Um, and also, this time it's important to have more defense. It's only that one situation because this time you will just sometimes fight hands to hands. And I will try this uh, without spellbook. And uh, some storm builds will die. I think it's the best attempt anyway. Um, I don't see how, how well, I mean, I don't know how I can do it better with better results. So let's just go and enjoy this fight. It won't be that simple as the other ones. So we are here. Three attack skill, nothing here. And that's this army. Let's go. Of course, I could have moved my units better and blocked these two hexes, so they won't have even a chance to attack pirates. Of course, they survived, um, but I'm just uh, kinda exhausted after all of that, so I'm not thinking. Now, it's about baiting them, kinda shooting, I mean I have one more shoot, and I can still take out the retaliation with Nyx. I lost two beards so far. I can shoot one more time, yeah. I will do it before attacking. I'll just prepare my attack here. They will never catch me. So, Nyx will go first, always, <clears throat> after waiting, because he's the slowest one. So we can now attack one of his, uh, one of these attacks, and after attacking, run away. So bait them here, you run the other side. And now we can prepare attack again. Attack them. Uh, you will never lose next in this fight, that's something. There is no way. I will kill Nyx. Of course, sometimes happens this. So, nothing to worry. I can just do this. And don't take out the retaliation because we need to have our attack prepared. So, a bit more turns. Now I can wait with everybody. And I can reach with everybody, so let's attack. Yeah, 10 more health. Always, if you have like cure, stone skin, shield, anything like that, it will just uh, let you do this fight easier and with less losses. Alright, so that's it. Thanks for watching, everybody. It's around 15 minutes, I won't do anything else in this uh, tutorial. And maybe if you want, and if I feel that I want to explain a bit more in fights why zombies or Walking Dead move that way, not the other, why this is always working. Um, then maybe in uh, next episode uh, of the tutorials. Um, but for now it's the end. So, some towns can do search charts they want without any problems. Some have some harder time, like Tower needs Nagas. I would say that Conflux really like to have Bless. I would say also that Dungeon or Necro um, needs to have something to easily clear church charts and avoid losses. So uh, my personal favorites of this one, I think I can go there and see. So I think 
it's the easiest for me to fight this with Tathra obviously. It's really easy to do it with Inferno and Magox, this strategy with Magox. And of course, once you have enough many skeletons or, uh, or Trugodites, it's also easy, just one shot. And I really love also the Stronghold with upgraded uh, Wolf Riders. Uh, this really sounds great. About the others like Confux and Rampart and Tower even, it's similar to this shooting strategy. Um, sometimes uh, Cove will be able to do Blast and just one shot with Nymphs. Mm. Fortress is something like in the middle. Like you can, you can just rely on your shooter. Uh, you can also um, do the strategy same as uh, liches and skeletons, uh, beholders and trugodites, same lizard men and gnolls. So it's really interesting. Uh, hopefully, it will make your games more fun, as you will just feel great after clearing churchyards so easily. And I was afraid of this uh, bank. I think I shouldn't be. Um, I don't remember every strategy like I can go now to the game and every time repeat uh, and every time um, win without losses. Sometimes I do mistakes, sometimes I just forget about something um, because there are many strategies. But once I will start uh, using this in multiplayer games, I will just um, progress. So. Um, that's it for now. Thanks for watching. I needed a lot of time to not only find out the strategy, but also to record this in uh, this way to show you and let you understand easier and just make a thing value content. So, it will be appreciated if you will even like leave comments and say, ah, come on, get a life, yeah? So, uh, that's it. Thanks for watching and see ya. Have a nice time. Have a nice day.